Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, Clay Ricks and I'm Casey Davis uh, here from the Scrap Pile. Um, getting ready to do a little build series on uh, Seagull Models Yak 54 from uh, Legend Hobby. And man, take it easy on us. It's the first time we're ever doing this. Man, we're going to give it a shot and throw our hats on the ring on the YouTube world and see what we do. So uh, you see anything you like, let us know. You see something you don't like or how we can improve, let us know that as well. Man, we're, we're receptive and open to stuff like that. But uh, really want to thank Tomas Whelan for uh, sending this out to us. Uh, got a really wicked power set up. You know, stay tuned for those videos. Um, pretty much just going to go through the manual and just do it right by the book. We're not using any other hardware than what it comes with. Uh, it's just run it like we brung it. Well, we're going to do a few just personal touches. Yeah, personal touches uh, for sure. You know, things that we do on all of our models and uh, what we would suggest you do on most of your builds and things like that. Absolutely. Uh, we won't be using any special hardware really to speak of other than maybe some things that you might have around your shop as well. Uh, we'll feature a lot of the products and materials that we use throughout the build. And uh, the hardware is all going to be coming from Legend Hobby yeah. other than maybe receiver, or what else, batteries, some other little yeah, things Yeah, receiver, like battery, things like that. But everything we'll else we, we got uh, from Legend Hobby. So Yep. Yeah. So follow us along. This will be a multi-part build series rather than one big build video. And yeah, we'll try to keep it uh, upbeat and not too boring, man. Try not to get too deep in the weeds. Kind of, kind of just going to hit the high points on stuff, man. If you guys are watching this, you kind of already probably know a little bit about what you're getting into. We're just going to show you some of our methods and what we do when we do builds. Absolutely. And maybe a little bit of wacky content along the way, scrap pile style. I'm pretty sure that at some point somebody's going to be an idiot. Absolutely. Probably going to be me. Absolutely. <laughs> If you know what we're talking about, you know. How many times are we going to say absolutely? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs>begin the build of the yak 54 by taking the manual and getting rid of that thing you know one thing I like to begin with is by prepping the control horns so these are G10 uh, like most standard kits come with these days and personally I like to paint these so I'll begin that by using a little bit of acetone and we'll wipe these down this just uh, removes any mold release or contaminants or anything that you might find on the control horns. And I just took a piece of cardboard from the box that the airplane come in, cut little slits. Uh, obviously didn't make those very big, but hey, it'll work. So we're gonna do this for all of the control horns. And then we're gonna shoot a little bit of uh, paint on it uh, we're not sponsored or endorsed by Krylon, but it works. Any paint you have will probably work, as long as it works for plastics, of course. And we're going to do that. We'll get back to you. We'll probably cut that. Okay. Recording that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, brother. Here. All right, what I like to do here is spray paint, man. Psh. Anyway, lots of light, even coats. Get all the edges. Probably let that sit for a few minutes and we'll do it again. All right, paint's done, guys. Man, we're gonna set this to the side, let it dry, and we're gonna work on uh, gluing in the hinges. Yep. All right, now that we're waiting on the paint to dry, Casey painted the control horns for us. Meantime, we're gonna get, get these hinges glued up. Okay, we've got all the hinges all prepped. We've got our tape. We've got our hinges with a little bit of petroleum jelly. Again, you can use some oil. I've used gun oil in the past. Uh, this just kind of sticks there a little bit better and don't have to worry about it quite as much. I like to use high saw. This is EA9462. Honestly, I have to look every time I go to order some more. There are some different high saws that uh, have different cure times. This is the one that I find to work. You want to let it sit overnight. That's one of the key things. Uh, it is a slow cure epoxy. With that, you can get some tips. 
the mixing tips, waste a little bit of glue. If you're not gonna be doing a lot of glue up, uh, you, it's just as easy just to put a little bit in the cup. Both parts come out equal. And you just mix like your normal epoxy. When you're doing hinges, you could also use 30 minute, uh, what's the brand, Casey help me, Bob Smith, mm -hmm. uh, some of the other ones, Zap. Any 30 minute epoxies will probably do just fine. This is just my preferred glue, mainly because of working time. This is also why I do this first in any build, because I like to hinge everything, do all the control horns, everything that's gonna have a lot of wait time, get that knocked out early on. So we've got that mixed up, nice and even. It's got a little bit of an odor to it, not bad. So then I'll take a toothpick, just get a little dab of that. And generally I'll start with the, the wing side. It doesn't really matter which one. And I'll work a little bit of that down in there. Be patient with this. Take your time, do it right. And don't only do this. This is, honestly, you may even could skip this part, but I don't. Again, with Robart hinges, it's a little bit different process in terms of when you're doing the, the hinge hole, you can actually put the toothpick down inside of it and coat that up a little bit better. Put a little bit on the hinge. This is again why it's important to put that petroleum jelly on there. coat that up relatively good try to get a good even coat as much as we can and then we're going to insert the hinge into the wing or control surface doesn't matter and then I like to kind of work it back and forth and that's just so that I know I've got a good even coat Okay, work that in. We're gonna repeat this process for all of the hinges on the wing. Once we've got all the hinges in the wing, we're gonna repeat this process and put the aileron on. Got all the hinging done and we've got it all taped up as you can see the plane behind me got the rudder on it now we've uh, also got the control horns are all painted up and ready for prep or final prep rather so trusty sanding block we're gonna just put a little light sand on the very base of that horn nothing crazy Once you get it roughed up a little bit, got some little texture to it, take your paper towel and just wipe it off. Wipe off the excess dust. Do that for all of your horns and then you're ready to install them. Looks like we're all done for the day. We're gonna let all this stuff set up, let it dry. That uh, high saw, I like to let it sit overnight. So it's a good time to let it wait and hydrate. We'll come back to you in the next episode. Yep, thanks for checking us out, man. We'll uh, have another series going on this, so check back soon for that. And yeah, hit the, uh, the like, the subscribe, leave us a comment. All the let things. Let us know what you think. That's it. Check us out on uh, Anchor on our podcast, yep. RC Scrap Pile Podcast, Spotify, all those. Yes, yeah, the RC Scrap Pile Podcast, Nuts and Bolts Podcast. 
and uh, follow us here for more builds, flights, and other crazy shenanigans, hopefully. Should be fun, man. We're, we're yeah. gonna try to kick this off uh, pretty hardcore next year and try to stay on top of it. We'll see how well we do and see what kind of, uh, the kind of feedback we get from you guys, so. Absolutely. Looking forward to it and doing some more fun stuff. Hopefully we'll get a little less rigid like a breadstick on camera and it'll be more fun. So stay tuned.